Alrighty, we got a pretty long and extensive problem, so I'm just going to tackle it head on. This time we have more consideration of this hypothetical magnetic monopole. So let's consider the motion of a particle with mass m and an electric, electric charge qe in the field of a hypothetical stationary magnetic monopole qm at the origin. We would expect the field, the magnetic field, to look like mu naught over 4 pi qm over r squared in the r hat direction. All right. So a find the acceleration of QE expressing your answer in terms of Q, Q, M, M, R, and V. B, show that the speed V is equal to the magnitude of the velocity, all right, and it, that it's a constant. Show that the vector quantity, show that this vector quantity is also a constant. Q equal M, R cross V minus mu naught QE, QM over 4 pi R hat direction. All right, now page two of once. Choosing spherical coordinates r theta phi with the polar z axis along q, calculate the following. q dot phi hat and show that theta is a constant of the motion. q dot r hat and show that the magnitude of q is this expression, mu naught over 4 pi, absolute value qe qm divided by cosine theta. And then what we want is q dot, that should be theta hat by the way, my apologies. And we want to show that d phi dt is equal to k over r squared and determine the constant k. Part e, by expressing v squared and cylindrical coordinates, obtain the equation of the trajectory in the form of dr d phi equals f of r, where, uh, where we want to determine what f of r is, and then solve this equation for r of phi. All right, well, we got our work cut out for us, so let's dive in. Uh, so we know that uh, for part A, F equal MA, but we also know that that's equal to QE V cross B from the Lorentz force. So plug all that in, and we can show that A is equal to mu naught over 4 pi QE QM divided by MR squared V cross uh, R hat, or if you'd like, we can write the R hat as the R vector, um, and just put another factor of 1 over R in there which we see is what it's equal to. Uh, for B, let's use some um, intuition to guide us. If A is perpendicular to V, then A dot V is equal to zero. And we know that A is equal to dV dt, so dotting uh, dV dt with itself, we get uh, V dV dt equals zero. Um, and so if dV dt equals zero, then V has to mean then V has to be a constant. So that was a little intuition, maybe a little hand wavy, but pretty straightforward, I would say. Uh, part C, taking the time derivative of the Q, uh, turned out to be kind of a mess. So what we need to do is move the time derivative to the R vector and the V vector, and then uh, pass it on to the last term with the R vector divided by R itself. Um, this leaves us with m v cross v plus m r cross a minus mu naught q e q m over 4 pi. And then we have to apply the uh, quotient rule there. Um, now we know that any two vectors that are the same vector crossing themselves is zero. Okay, they're parallel and the cross product of parallel vectors is zero. We literally just found what a was in part a, the acceleration in part a. So we'll substitute that in. Yay, more mess. Um, and then it's just a bunch of algebra for the time derivatives and simplifying it down. Uh, but lo and behold, even as messy as that is, we ended up equaling zero. They all canceled. So that was a mess, but it all came together to a nice point. Who would have thought? Um, moving forward to part D, part one and part D, Q dot phi hat, uh, we just have to be careful uh, with the uh, unit vectors. Uh, we see that Q we want in the Z hat direction. So Z dot Q hat goes to zero. We distribute the Q, the dot product with the, the phi hat on the right hand side through R dot R hat dot phi hat zero. So we see we get a couple cancellations. And what we're really left with is R cross V dot phi hat equals zero. 
So we see here, we just find a cross product of R and V, respectively, and we and we see that now that after the cross product, then we take the dot product, we end up with R squared phi dot, uh, dot the dot notation representing that it's with respect to the time derivative. Uh, but again, if that all equals zero, then theta itself is constant and phi itself is constant. So we got a lot of constants going on here. It makes you wonder how this extrapolates to another theory. Uh, okay, do the same arithmetic and set, set up for part two of D. And we see more cancellations, more projections. Um, moving it through. And uh, since we've just found that theta was a constant, so too is Q because cosine of theta being a, is also a constant. So moving it over proves that Q is a constant. It's not varying. So we're good there. Uh, now part three, where we're taking the dot product with respect to theta hat, uh, that we of course get some cancellation on the R hat term and we got to use the cross product again. But here we see that we end up with phi dot is equal to Q over MR squared, where we set a Q equal to the constants we just found in part two of that. And we just let the K equal Q over M, thus showing that DQ or D phi over DT is equal to Q over R squared. So we see that uh, that is phi dot is equal to K over R squared. Um, this is gonna be crucial for our next step, so we'll just keep going. V squared equal uh, R dot squared plus R squared theta dot squared plus R squared sine squared theta phi dot. Uh, this again, we find in the velocities like this from classical mechanics or any other books where we're converting coordinate systems. This is very common to see. But again, we showed that theta was constant. So theta dot's constant and phi dot is equal to K over R squared. So we plug those things in and we see that we get some cancellations respectively. And when we solve this for R dot squared, we see we get V squared minus the K squared sine squared over R squared. Note that dr d phi is equal to dr dt divided by uh, d phi dt. So we just keep plugging through it and then we're left with R dot phi dot. And if we square both, we end up with R dot squared over phi dot squared plug it in, simplify it through, most mainly algebra, and then we get back to the fact that now we need to take the square root in order to find dr d phi. So we do that and we end up with r equal, or uh, dr d phi equals r square root vr over k squared minus sine squared theta. Again, be very careful of your algebra, it gets messy. Um, and then for part f, just use separation of variables, right? Isolate the R's on one side and the phi's on one side, and then integrate. Okay, so we get, you know, we do that. We see that uh, the R integral is gonna be nasty, go figure, but the phi leads to phi minus phi naught because we always have a constant. With these trig functions, pretty straightforward. Just be very careful how you maneuver with them, simplify them through. Uh, we're gonna have to solve this thing for R, so multiply over by sine. Uh, multiply then by secant to get rid of that arc secant or inverse secant. Isolate R by multiplying and dividing by V. And, you know, basic algebra here. Solve through. We know that secant is 1 over cosine, so that's what we substitute it in. Make it elementary functions. Plug in K, simplify down. And now we just put all those constant terms in terms of A, and we're good to go. That was a real big mess, but I promise you it'll show up again.